This is the Jewelry Shop Scam. In the Jewelry Shop Scam, uh, we all have different parts to play. They're quite important parts. Myself and Paul play police officers, and Jessica plays a customer who enters the shop looking to buy a piece of jewelry. It's sort of a double bluff because halfway through the hit, the police come in, played by Alex and Paul, and the shop staff think that the police have intercepted a thief, played by myself. But in actual fact, the con's still in full swing. The hustlers have selected a small high street jewellers as the perfect place to stage this scam. Unbeknown to the shop staff, our hidden cameras have been placed inside to cover the following action. Jess enters the shop first, looking well dressed and respectable. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> She approaches the counter and talks to the staff about wanting to buy a new necklace. Silver. Alex comes into the shop shortly after. He is apparently just another browsing shopper. And where's the third member of our team? Paul is outside ready to step in on cue. Got a nice one here. After some browsing, they show Jess a necklace that takes her fancy. Yeah, that's a sort of length. Yeah, it's quite nice. How much is this one? It's quite expensive, actually. Six. Oh. <laughs> 624. Yeah, that's really cool. The necklace is worth around £600, which is a suitable bit of swag for this scam. Jess seems happy with the choice and says she'll buy it. As she finishes counting the notes, Alex swoops in. OK, stop there, police. What? Welcome to the police. Tracy, I'm placing you under arrest for deception and fraud. And leave that money on the counter. Please let my colleague in, please. Flashing a fake police badge, he arrests Jess for passing counterfeit money. Will the shopkeepers buy his act? We've been following her all day. There's been counterfeit cash. She's been passing it off for jewellers. Yeah, go ahead. The shocked shopkeepers have bought his line and the hook and sink her too. The hustlers insist the cash is forged and must be bagged as evidence. In fact, it's the gang's own hustle bankroll and it's actually not forged at all. It's all going for evidence for her. I'm afraid that's part of the evidence as well now. You will get it back, obviously. And there it is. Alex the fake copper has convinced the shopkeeper to bag up the £600 necklace as well. I can ask you just to... Pop that in here. Thank you. It's all going to plan. With the necklace bagged, the scam is complete. Our team of hustlers have cleverly choreographed a theft worth £600 from right under their noses. Bitch, you could have cost me my job, you know that. Yeah. Beatrice. The hustlers leave the shop, claiming yeah, to be off sorry. to the police station. OK. I'll be back in an hour. I'm going to take a full statement from you because obviously it will go down as evidence for her, yeah? Had this been a real scam, it would have been the last time the shopkeepers ever saw their expensive necklace. And just how convinced was the shopkeeper by our fake coppers? The lady we dealt with was so shocked that that happened to her, and in a way she was so relieved that we had prevented Jessie from virtually robbing the store that she completely put aside all her fears that we might not be genuine police officers. So you're, you're saying to me, what about if, what if all three of them were in on that? They'd have had me. They'd have had me then. The best way people can guard against this scam is to always make sure people are who they say they are. If a police officer is genuine, then he'd be willing to show you um, identification, phone numbers that you can ring to confirm. Um, they will prove who they say they are. Half of you are right. That's OK. <laughs> but all of you are wrong. Police. Thank you. Right. Something has just gone terribly wrong. Something even the hustlers weren't expecting. Alex takes a closer look at the Mark's cash. 